this is a Stuart Major Beam engine rebuild and this is part 15 and it's all about making the crankshaft from bits of metal on my lathe and here's some of the bits of metal on my lathe oh that's better I can't stand all this noise thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful no I'm only kidding welcome to part 16 of the Stuart Major Beam engine rebuild in this one I'm going to make the crankshaft it's a very simple job I need a 7 inch long piece of silver steel. So I'm putting a larger piece of silver steel in the chuck. This is on the larger of my two lathes. For this parting off job I'm using a high speed steel parting tool. So I've slowed the lathe down because if I go too fast the tool will blunt very quickly. This silver steel is a very hard material. My old smart and brown lathe which you're looking at at the moment, although you're not looking at very much of it, is a very good old machine. It's a model 1024 and it's very substantial, so parting off is no problem to it whatsoever. But it is quite noisy, especially as the belt slips, and the reason I have the belt slipping on the big lathe is if it does lock up, the belt slips and it doesn't break. Maybe it's not good engineering practice, but I did once upon a time have a Tom Senior M1 milling machine. This was a gear-driven machine and very, very powerful, with a three-phase converter. And once something went wrong, where the milling cutter jammed in the work, but not for long, it whistled past my ear and buried itself in the concrete wall of the garage. And after that, I always slackened off the belts a little bit. What you're watching at the moment is me facing this piece of bar in the smaller of my two lathes, which is a Boxford AUD. A great old machine, it's a bit beaten up, but it really is good. As I have mentioned previously, this is a piece of silver steel, and it's accurately ground to exactly three quarters of an inch in diameter. Here I'm using a centre drill to make a centre hole in the end of the shaft. And the reason for this is purely decorative. I would presume that the full size engine, if there was such a thing, would have a crankshaft about a foot in diameter. And these were generally turned on large lathes between centres. And also from my days of building steam locomotives, I would always centre the axles. It just looks good. If you have a look at various full size engines, you will see this quite a lot but it is optional and not at all functional. What I used to do frequently though with the steam locomotives is I would centre drill the axle, then I would drill a small hole down the centre of the axle and drill a hole at 90 degrees to this hole down the centre of the axle, exactly where the axle box was. This was quite a good way of lubricating the axle box because the normal way to lubricate the axle box is to pour some oil into a little reservoir on top of the box but in this reservoir there would be grit from the firebox. So by putting the oil in down the centre of the axle, it was always clean oil that flushed out the axle box. I did this on quite a few of my engines and the axle box has lasted a long time. I've seen axle boxes wear out in a couple of seasons. I don't do it that way anymore though because the last engine that I built, which is the small one that you may have seen running around my garden, I use ball racers just about everywhere on it, so I don't need to do this. After machining the new crankshaft to the required 7 inches in length and centre drilling it at each end, here's the finished product. One 7 inch long piece of silver steel ready to fit to the crank web. The first thing to do is clean out the crank web. I'm using cellulose thinners or lacquer thinners as you call it in the USA. I'm giving it a thorough clean. And then guess what, I'm going to use Loctite 603 to bond this shaft into the hole in the crank web. But before I actually do that and apply the Loctite, I'm just roughening up the end of the crankshaft with a piece of fine emery cloth. This acts as a key for the Loctite and makes a very firm joint. But I always use far too much Loctite 603 on components. I like to make sure that both surfaces are very evenly coated. I will probably end up pinning these two components for a bit of extra security. If these components were painted I would not be doing this. Loctite is quite an effective paint remover. In this clip as you can clearly see, I'm just wiping off the surplus Loctite. You can also clearly see that I have left the crankshaft protruding very, very slightly from the crank web. This just seems to be the full size practice and it makes it look better. I will of course be painting this crank web, but only round the outside edge. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.